I uh, foolishly promised our audience that they could have some questions. <laughs> so now, <laughs> now they yes. can. It, yes, ma'am. From what I've read of, of your personal philosophy, there seems to be an evident uh, contradiction between that and that of the Playboy advisor. I mean, uh, well, you, seem I to in, you seem to advocate uh, chastity in the Playboy advisor very often. And according to your personal philosophy, that seems to be a great contradiction. Isn't, is that so? It's an interesting question. Well, I don't think there's any inconsistency. Uh, I think that, you know, the uh, distinction might be that the philosophy is necessarily a, um, you know, a general approach to life, and the answers in the advisor are uh, predicated on particular problems that may have, you know, sometimes people assume uh, from the philosophy that we're, you know, a good deal more libertine than we really are, and it's one of the reasons for writing the editorials. Uh, it's not that we're, um, uh, you know, immoral. It's that we think that mor morality ought to be predicated on some common sense considerations where sex is concerned. You, you are not the Playboy advisor. I suppose some people have wondered if you are. That's true. I'm not. I'm really Ann Landers. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here, folks. Uh, yeah, someone else was... Um, look. Only uh, the question was if you if you uh, can't couldn't hear at home. Um, what was the question? Why isn't little Annie Fanny in every month? Every month. And uh, her husband gets the magazine, and she likes the interviews. That's right. a three-part question. Well, uh, the interviews are, I think, uh, just about as popular as the Playmate these days. Mm -hmm. uh, little Annie Fanny would be in every month, except that it is so complicated with the three-dimensional, four-color process uh, artwork that they use on it that it's just not possible to turn them out any more often. And every time they complete a feature, we run it. So we run as many as we can. There you are, f little Annie Fanny fans. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever you are. Uh, is there someone on the other side? Oh, here's a gentleman. Uh. Yes, uh, could you tell me, in your line of work, it would seem to be very difficult to separate the business from the pleasure. Mm. Um, <laughs> you, must, you must be talking to you and Are you able to, to separate out me. your private life from a business sort of life? Well, I've never really tried. Uh, <laughs> because indeed, uh, you know, so much of Playboy, the, the magazine, the clubs, uh, the various things that we're involved in really uh, are the uh, avocations and the entertainment of other people. So um, the line is indeed a very vague one, and uh, we don't make any great attempt to separate the two. I enjoy my work, so it all fits in together. It's funny, I've been there twice, and I've never seen you have any private life. I mean, you seem to constantly That's work. That's because my private and, uh, life is private. Apparently. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know it's anybody the other part who, of the house, who works more hours <laughs> than you. Yeah, uh, one, a gentleman is, is <coughs> bursting one seam. Uh, Mr. Hafner, sure. uh, sure. Mr. Hafner uh, are you uh, contemplating marriage? <laughs> not in the immediate future. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> well, um, Look it's for the been answer suggested, in yes, in Playboy the advisor next month. No, it's been suggested that uh, if I did, that the, the empire might crumble. But uh, uh, I certainly, if I, you know, if I met the right girl and uh, was so inclined, I would. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't take that into consideration. But uh, at the present time, I think it is um, safe to say that I, I'm enjoying um, my bachelor existence. There's a gentleman all the way in the back. I assume a gentleman. Yes. Hi. Earlier <laughs> in the show, Ambassador Linowitz said that he saw a great deal of... Uh, ability in a man who made his own empire, so to speak, and uh, he thought that this type of individual could offer a great deal to government service. And I was wondering what type of uh, application your line of work would have, perhaps, in our uh, foreign policy program, for example. <laughs> uh, in case anyone missed that, the question was, how would Mr. Hefner's activities contribute to the body politic? <laughs> I think you missed. Like uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> you rephrased that a little bit. We have yeah. something to trade. Yeah. No. No. Well, uh, I think that uh, the the basic things that Playboy believes in would probably help us a good deal on the international front. Uh, putting a little more emphasis on um, the good life and a little less on uh, hostility and war. Uh, as a matter of fact, on a serious note, I really uh, feel that. Uh, as the various countries are able to move into, as Russia has, uh, before we began having the more recent difficulties, as they begin moving into um, a middle-class society and enjoying some of the benefits of uh, the good life, so-called, uh, it takes a lot of tensions away from the world, and, uh, and that that may be one of the solutions to the problems that exist internationally. Mm -hmm. We have almost no time left. 
It's good to see you here. You, there My are rumors pleasure. that you almost never come out of that house. Mm, and you know that, why. Uh, and that you were there all the time living in uh, one change of pajamas after another. He, mm -hmm. you wor he works in, in pajamas. And he has, those are the greatest looking pajamas I've ever seen in my life. They're better. <laughs> I don't have a suit that looks as good as those pajamas. Do you have pajamas on under that suit? This is actually a pair of pajamas. I've had it cut. <laughs> <laughs>